spent a lot of my time looking after my dad. And ever since I was young, I can remember that he's always been really up and down with his moods. And he hasn't had a job for... Well, he hasn't had a job in ages. But he's, he's such a nervous person that when he has to do something, do he really has to think about it first. And sometimes he will just go ahead and do it. And other times he'll just back away from it. And it, it's really frustrating for me because you never know when he is going to do something and when he's not. I mean, the amount of times I've wasted time on him in the past just trying to get him to leave the house. You know, for something stupid like, uh, like a doctor's appointment. And most of the time you can't even get him past the front door. It's, it's staffed really because you know, he's the one with the mental health problem but I'm the one who's been driven mad. He's always in a rush. That's his problem. And I mean, like you can you can try to tell your kids, you know, to to take the time, but they never listen, do they? <laughs> and I can see I upset him, and, and, and he's not afraid to tell me. But what am I supposed to do? I I I, I can't just get better because he tells me that I should. I, I don't know what I can do to get better. He's been prescribed stuff in the past, but he won't take medication. And I've tried to get him to, but it just becomes something else for us to argue about. Like him wanting me to get him a bloody dog. If you just take the medication that he's been prescribed, then I wouldn't have half the hassle I've got because the pills would help him to deal with himself. I mean, he got a lot worse after my mum died, and I know that that is part of it. But there's just so much pressure on me having to look out for him all the time. I used to be his son, and now I'm just his carer. Well, I've, I've never believed in, in popping pills to sort out a problem. I mean, I, I know some people have got to take them, but I also know that I'm better off without them. And, and, and that's my choice. That's, that's my right. See, I, I don't want to spend the rest of my life in some drugged-up haze, even if the quality of my life isn't what it should be. Because... I know my mental health disables me, I know that. But it feels like I'm not being listened to when I tell James that it, it's up to me to deal with this the way I choose. He, he wants to choose for me. And it, if he really wanted to do something for me, right, it, he'd let me get a dog. Well, I wanted the doctors to make him take his medication or, or section him, do whatever it took to get him right. Do you know what he said? He said there's nothing he can do because my dad has mental capacity to make that decision for himself. There's something about he has the right to refuse medical treatment so long as he can tell them that he understands what they're talking about. But, but get this, then he said that he would be better off if he took the medication. So they're agreeing with me, but there's nothing he can actually do about it. I mean, what's that about? I mean, the whole system is ridiculous. You know, what you find is that no one is ever on the side of the carers. The, the, the thing with James is that he only sees what's wrong with me. He, he doesn't see all the things that are right. And, and, and he, he, do, he doesn't credit me with having a mind of my own, even if it sometimes has a mind of its own. He doesn't understand that these are my decisions to make, not, not his to take for me. What can be so difficult when you're dealing with personal budgets is being clear about who the client actually is because sometimes what you find is that carers are more interested in what you're doing than the clients themselves are. As a social worker I'm finding that introducing the personalisation agenda is something that people can find very exciting because it means that they can make decisions about what they receive support for. Some people still want social services to make those decisions for them, and that's OK. But a lot of people have a much better idea themselves of what it is they most need. It might be that they want to receive personal budgets and manage everything themselves. They might want someone else to manage that side of it for them. The Davis family were a classic example of where the benefits of personalisation can actually create tensions. So if I find a CBT therapist for my dad, we could get money to pay for it? Yeah, if that's what he wanted to use his budget for, then yes. 
You have to remember, though, that it's his budget to spend and he'll need to make the choices himself, so it might not be as straightforward as that. Yeah, but I've heard that cognitive behaviour therapy is good for people with anxiety. So can't you just help me to convince him that that's what he needs? I can see you've got your dad's best interests in mind, but he might not be as keen on the idea as you are. So you need to be prepared for if he wants to use his budget differently. Yeah, but in this case it's obvious what he needs, and if he can't see that, then I'll make sure that he can. Just be careful how you talk to him about it. Look, I know this must be frustrating for you, but ultimately it's up to him to decide, and so don't let this be something that creates more tension between you. Now, why is it always all about him? You know, I'm sick of hearing it. It's always about him. Why can't it be about me for a bloody change? Well, I went with this personal budget thing, and... Uh... Well, you can see what I did with it, can't you? I, uh, I didn't go for therapy. Uh, I bought a dog, Sam, and uh, he's, uh, he's a lovely dog, he is, and he's a border collie, he's really lively. But you can imagine, uh, you can imagine James's reaction when he first saw him, you know? I was like, a dog? A dog? What, what have you done that for? Why have you bought a dog? You know, if you think I'm going to look after a dog as well as look after you, you really must be mad. And I just kept thinking, why has a man who won't leave the house bought a dog that... Needs to be outside. Well, yeah, that, that's because you thought that you'd uh, end up having to walk him, you know, if you needed exercise. Yeah, you know, I just thought if ever there was proof needed that this personalisation thing was a stupid idea, then then this was it. And then I thought, you know, what what are other people getting to waste this money on? Well, I didn't think. I went out, literally right out the front door with the dog, before I could give it a thought. <laughs> and uh, I mean, I, I'd wanted to go outside, but I, I needed a reason. And uh, and Sam was that reason. I mean, I, I was really nervous the first time, wasn't I? I was like, well, keep your head down and look at the ground. And, but at least I was out breathing fresh air, you know. And, uh, and, and I took him into the park and I thought, well, why is this taking me so long to do this, you know? Because I love that park, you know? You know, and I'd been so frustrated with how difficult it was to get Dad to leave the house. And then we got the dog and, I mean, you, you just you couldn't keep him inside. Oh, and of course, with the dog, people talk to you. And I hadn't even thought of that. You know, I mean, you know, they're talking to you about the dog, so it's it's okay. You know, um, I think I just I, I just had a chance to have something else to think about, and and a reason to get up and go out. You know, you know it was the first time he's done anything in years, wasn't it? So yeah. you know, now we all jump off, jump in the car, and we go off to places, and, and we have little walks, don't we? Mm -hmm. I mean, I didn't think I'd ever see the day. But I, di I didn't doubt that I could look after a dog, did I, you know? And I even spoke to the social worker about it, you know, so she knew what I was doing. And, uh, and I think the point is now is that at the moment, I feel better. And uh, I'm, I'm doing this volunteering for, mm. the, uh, for the Rangers Walk and Talk project, you know? I mean, I'm, I'm just a marker at the back of the group, but it's about being part of something, you know? And I, I am part of something now. And, and, and the truth is, I like that. You know, I do like being part of something. And I think also it's... Well, it means James can just worry a little bit less about me. You know, and it was my dad's personal budget. It wasn't mine. Even if I did think that I could make a better decision than he could. You know, so what can I say? I'm, I was wrong. Just don't tell him that. <laughs> you answer. Hey. Oh, it's for you. Good. I hope you'll agree. We've just seen on this DVD fine example of how personalisation can improve the quality of life for people. Personalisation is about choice and control. The choice and control is yours.